particularly, uh, I don't think he has a great deal of integrity as a commentator, perfectly candid with you. But, you know, he has a shtick that he wants to sell. Um, he's, he's gotten rid of all semblance of, of having discussions on his shows, and they're essentially groups of sycophants who all want to tell him how bright he is and how he's protecting America from the big, bad, socialist, communist guy. Um, all that being said, um, his guest is, is very important, and again, a, a, an outgrowth of Obama's first 100 days in office. His guest is Michael Steele. Now, how many of you do not know who Michael Steele is? You may have heard the name. How many of you don't know who Michael Steele is? Okay. So somebody tell me, who is Michael Steele? RNC chairman. He is the RNC chairman. Okay. Michael Steele is the chairman of the Republican National Committee. One of the most important jobs that you can have in any political party, especially when you're in the out party. Uh, the President of the United States is essentially the head of, of, of you know, Obama's a head Democrat. But Michael Steele is the head Republican. Okay, uh, he's more important than Bobby Jindal, at least technically, uh, or any or, or Rush Limbaugh or anybody else like that. Now, the interesting thing about Michael Steele is that he's had a rough going. He's had a really, really rough going of being uh, chair of the RNC, and I, I've chatted about this in time from uh, from time to time. I am a fan of Michael Steele. I think he's incredibly competent on some levels. I think he's more than capable of doing the job on some levels. But he has been arguably the sort of whipping boy of the Republican Party ever since he was made chair of the RNC. Now, why was he made the whipping boy of the Republican Party? Uh, for several reasons. <clears throat> we'll get this in a second. One, I think it's because a large number of Republicans, they can't get at Obama, so they like do everything to Michael Steele that they can't do to Barack Obama. I mean, they, they take out their aggression on him. Um, they can't stop Obama's budget, so what happens last week? Uh, you know, two main leaders of the Republican National Committee put forth a, uh, a proposal that Michael Steele, even though he's the head of the Republican Party, cannot spend more than $100,000 without getting approval from his entire committee. That, that's ridiculous for, for a political party. $100,000 is nothing. Okay, you spend that much money running for a state house seat in Cuyahoga County. Okay, less than that probably, uh, or more than that actually. So uh, Michael Steele also got embarrassed because he was criticized by Rush Limbaugh and he didn't stand up for himself. Um, and you know, there's a lot of hostility to Michael Steele on the right. He actually um, he was disinvited from the Chicago Tax Tea Party, even though he's the head of the party, and he said he wanted to speak, and they said we're not interested in having you there. Okay. So you know he's made himself out to be sort of the professional whipping boy. I think, and I will say this very quickly before he speaks, and I've said this before, um, and, and this is important because Steele, Steele got his job in part because of Barack Obama's election. Okay, he was the first and most prominent affirmative action hire of the Republican Party. Okay. Black president gets elected, so the Republican Party says, all right, some of them said, the progressive ones said, we need to have a big tent, we need to get Michael Steele. And it's not like Michael Steele, he was a lieutenant governor of Maryland, um, you know, he was a good television personality, he probably should have been John McCain's vice presidential pick. I have said that for the longest time. John McCain wouldn't have lost as bad if he had picked Michael Steele instead of picking Sarah Palin. Um, but the other thing that's important <coughs> is that he has failed to address the, the sort of fundamental difficulty the Republicans have. And we sort of talked about this before, that you know, the reason the right has some of their difficulties with Obama, one, because they think he's a leftist and he's a liberal. But the other difficulty that Michael Steele faces is that last year, during the presidential race, there were all these polls that came out. Would you vote for a woman to be president of the United States? They were referring to Hillary. Would you vote for a black man to be president of the United States? You know, talking about Obama. And on average, the Republican Party 15% of the Republican Party, registered Republican voters, generally said they would not vote for an African American to be president of the United States, even if they were quote unquote qualified, and even if they were the nominees of their own party. Okay, that was Gallup, Reuters, poll after poll after poll after poll after poll. Now the reason that's significant is because if 15% will admit that in a poll, I'd say it's probably closer to 23%. I actually feel that way. I'm being optimistic. <laughs> I'm being optimistic. The Republican Party. They, they, didn't, they didn't ask in Niles or Youngstown. Uh, you know, so I don't, I don't know. Uh, but all that being said, um, so you know, roughly Michael Steele is in charge of a party where 20 to 25 percent of the people in the party say that they wouldn't vote for him just because of the color of his skin. And I think the Republican Party has the same difficulty that the Democrats had throughout the 90s, uh, throughout the 2000s. 
The Democrats throughout the 2000s, they played this whole crazy left-wing liberal game, and they insulted people of faith, and they treated faith like that was something for you know, black people and Latinos and poor white folks. And they offended everybody. That's why George Bush won every moral argument, because the Democrats refused to accept that many people in this country believe in God. right? Um, and once they figured that out, they actually started to win. So you got Hillary Clinton going to church and John Edwards going to church to repent, at least at this point. Um, and, and, and Barack Obama, I mean, again, no one ever doubted that Obama was a religious man. They just wondered what religion he was. But, you know, he was a religious person. And now Republicans have the same problem. Uh, they have to deal with the fact that 20 to 25 percent of their population is, is essentially hostile towards putting people of color, which is a term I hate because it applies to everybody, but they're hostile towards putting brown people uh, or tan people, very likely, in a position of executive authority. And until they handle that, they're going to keep losing. I mean, that, that's, that's just the difficulty that they have. So with that in mind, 